coming up, the latest new car rust-busting must-have being promoted, perhaps, at a car dealership near you. It's true what they say, you know. Leopards really don't change their spots. Even the rusty ones. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Hit me up on the website for that. Recently, I sensed a disturbance in the force, right? It was, it was either that or I got an email from a dude named Ross Gould, 4,000 kilometres, you know, over there somewhere, in Western Australia. Inspired by you, I am working hard to make Australia less shit. Well done, Ross. Approved. So let's discourage the sale of this and similar nonsense devices. An OBD dongle that is claimed to prevent vehicle corrosion through cathodic protection. Page 14 of Go Auto News, edition 1034, August the 12th, 2020, promoted as a new after sales revenue stream for dealers. Thank you very much, Ross. If you're not from around here, of course, John Mellor's Go Auto News is a fascinating attempt to cure insomnia by recycling press releases as a means of enticing car dealers to spend money with advertisers to make money for themselves, purportedly. What a great pity, I think, that nobody is ever fully conscious when they read it, statistically. Here... You can see a recycled press release which headlines issue 1034, yes, which is one of my all-time favourite go autos. I'll have you know. And as you will soon see, page 7, of course, represents a grand opportunity for the right applicant to have his soul sucked out, leaving him a withered husk. Yes. On page 23, this chap offers you the driver's seat of your very own dealership. Who hasn't wanted that? I know I have. Lord of the friggin' Ming Moles. Yes. On page 13, the kind folks at Organize It have pretty much encapsulated how it feels to be a woman working in a modern car dealership today in Schittsville. They really have not evolved all that much, sadly. And no... I would not touch those either. Not with your barge pole, it's uh, fair to say. Against this grand backdrop of narcolepsy-inducing automotive industry infotainment, we find the almighty auto-saver system. Yes, full-page advertisement, fantastic. A new revenue stream for dealers, yes. The world's first plug-and-play wireless rust protection device. Even though you, uh, you plug it into the OBD2 port, so technically it is kind of wired, and I don't really understand how a device can be both plug-and-play and also wireless, at least not at the same time. I thought they were mutually exclusive propositions, now that I think about it, I'm just saying. You don't typically plug a wireless device in. So there's that. Also, plug and play. It's, it's not a proper noun, dudes. A pro tip, mm, has two apostrophes technically, both before and after the mm, denoting the bilateral contraction of the word and. One for the removal of the A at the front and one for the removal of the D at the rear. I thought everyone knew that. But first impressions count, dudes. Like, it's important to make the right first impression. If you turn up for a first date with no pants, there's really no coming back from that. It's tantamount to impossible to make amends in this unfortunate situation. You won't be looking back fondly on your 10th anniversary and sharing a good old laugh about your trouser-free faux pas all those years ago. I mean, hey, we've all been there. Now, works on all vehicles, quote, Easy after sales sell with great returns. Quite. I mean, I can see a Ming Mole just slicing and dicing a man's resistance like a knife through butter over 
one of those babies. But I remain somewhat confused. Is this primarily and primarily about profit or actual corrosion protection, I wonder? I did go to their fine website where a video helpfully explained, if that's the right word, that this is not just an alleged rust protection device, but in fact it is, quote, the world's first onboard diagnostic oxidation interface, or OBD, OI. Yes, gotta love that jargon. Frankly, at this point, I was as on board with Autosaver as I remain to this day over the legendary Peter Brock energy polarizer. Remember those? I held one in my hand once. It was, I gotta say, it was better than Viagra. Meanwhile, back on Earth, Modern cars just don't rust, dudes. They don't rust because they're galvanised. Rust went away a few decades back quietly in the night because the industry transitioned from painted steel bodies to painted galvanised steel bodies. You know, galvanising. That proven coating of steel in zinc which cathodically protects the steel by forming a sacrificial anode. Thus, the steel cannot corrode until all the zinc is gone, even if you scratch the panel and expose the bare steel to the elements. It still won't rust. Galvanising is an actual electrochemical mechanism that works because it is based on real science and kind of validated by decades of implementation out there in the elements. So if you're one of those science-denying dipshits who thinks your opinion is all that matters here, I should explain that science is the meme of accumulated information forming a map of how reality actually works and which facilitates technology and stops us all from living in friggin' caves and dying, often painfully, in our 20s. Science, therefore, rocks in the way that your opinion does not. So there's that. You see it all around you, galvanising. Galvanised roofs, galvanised power poles, those massive towers that hold up 132,000 volt power lines and keep them aloft somewhat safely. They're on trailers, galvanising water tanks, bridges, cables, and pretty much every pole that holds up every stop sign and every giveway sign across suburban Shitsville. And all the traffic lights, galvanising, yes, hidden in plain sight everywhere. These things are all galvanised and guess what? They're all not rusting, all exposed to the elements. They're not painted, they're drilled after the fact and they're still not friggin' rusting. They're all impervious to corrosion for like 30 years or thereabouts. The body of your fine automobile, I'd suggest, is protected just like that, under the paint, which is largely just cosmetic. So, to me, strike one for this mighty autosaver system is that it purports to solve a problem that simply does not exist, and which has not existed in cars for decades. So, well done, dudes. And strike two is, well, I don't see how it could possibly work. Speaking frankly, I just don't. See, corrosion is a huge problem in industry. I mean, all that steel, so damn inconvenient if it all falls down unexpectedly one day. <laughs> I think you'd agree. We did spend more than a few minutes discussing corrosion at university. I note, even back when the dinosaurs roamed the earth and we had carrier pigeons to facilitate all of our emails. Autosaver, let's call it, explains. The device is designed to enrich the metal with electrons provided by the power of the vehicle's battery. The amount of current used is equivalent to what is used by an electronic clock that is installed in most new vehicles today. Utilising this small amount of energy is done in the circuit design of the unit's OBDOI module. This module comprises a power generating and regulating circuit that impresses 24 milliamps of current through the grounded vehicle body by utilising the vehicle's existing electrical circuitry. So, just to see that I've got this straight, and I am wearing my electrical appreciation shirt, which might help, Ohm's law, V equals IR. We've got 12 volts, 24 milliamps, therefore, 
the product and its, quote, power generating and regulating circuit is an elegantly transparent blue plastic box with a 500 ohm resistor inside and presumably some sort of LED to inform you that it's, well, let's call it uh, working. I don't see how it can actually generate power as it claims to because it seems to use the vehicle's battery for power. Perhaps I'm still an electrical moron, disappointingly. And uh, if the car's clock is already drawing 24 milliamps by autosavers, uh, well, let's call it um, logic. Is the clock therefore not doing exactly what the autosaver unit purports to do electrically in terms of current draw from the battery to earth and therefore already, let's say, protecting the car from corroding in exactly the same way? I think if you got a hundred engineers and scientists together and polled them independently on this, they would conclude overwhelmingly that these Pseudo-scientific claims just really don't add up, but perhaps I am wrong. If in fact that mechanism miraculously worked, please let me know where I've gone wrong understanding this quote-unquote technology, because I am just not seeing it. It is generally accepted by corrosion scientists that 10 milliamps of current is sufficient to inhibit the corrosion process. Is it really? Like, in cars? I would really appreciate a face-to-face -face with these corrosion specialists, and perhaps they could explain why we bother buying thousands of tonnes of expensive zinc and consuming all that energy just to melt it, just to galvanise car bodies and all those other quite expensive steel things which I kind of mentioned earlier, when we could just hook up a tiny battery and a 500 ohm resistor instead and get the job done just as well. I wonder why cars do not come with this kind of device fitted to them standard off the factory floor. because. It seems like an economic no-brainer, like a real win, if it worked. Perhaps it's because they do not work. I mean, it's got to be a possibility, right? In fact, on October the 28th of 2015, Consumer Protection WA stopped the sale of and secured refunds for consumers who bought a computerised electronic corrosion inhibitor distributed by a company called Motor One. After independent testing and advice, the West Australian government found that the corrosion protection claims were bullshit. They put it somewhat differently, of course, in the official news release, but same thing and there you go. At about the same time, of course, New South Wales Fair Trading Commissioner Rod Stowe warned consumers over here not to waste their money buying computerised electronic corrosion inhibitors for motor vehicles after investigations revealed the devices don't work. Frankly, unless there's been some miracle development in corrosion science over the past five years, and I really do doubt that, you'd best be saving the big bucks here. That'd be my suggestion to you. If you find yourself on the showroom floor buying a fine new vehicle, no matter how many top buttons the resident Ming mole was prepared to sacrifice to the cause. It is fascinating watching them perform, however. So damn compelling. <laughs> I think you'd agree. To go auto, I say sincerely, thank you so much for the ongoing outstanding autotainment. Edition 1034 was a real winner, and I nodded off almost immediately. <laughs> Yes, I eagerly await, of course, your long-term review of the Autosaver product. Perhaps in that piece you could interview one of those alleged consensus-type corrosion engineers to explain, even if it does work, how the unit is not actually just a bit too belt and braces on a modern galvanised automobile. Do keep up the fine work at Go Auto, making Australia less shit, by ensuring that your two to three readers get the regulation eight hours of sleep during these admittedly stressful times. As your next Prime Minister, I salute you and your unwavering commitment to this great nation. Well done, dudes, and thanks once again for publishing such an excellent edition.